Welcome back and what's going on today? We are out and about chasing some pout. <laughs> See what I did there? But like I was saying, we are out chasing some pout. I've got the underwater camera down. Hopefully gonna get some underwater footage here before it gets dark. I have my buddy Mike joining me here in just a little bit. And as I was getting set up, I was getting the underwater camera down, trying to find a good angle where I could see both of my baits and then this happened. Well, I was uh, just actually checking camera angles for the underwater camera. Put my baits down to make sure I could see them both. And I couldn't find my one hook. And then I, all of a sudden I see a burbot sliding off to the side. So that thing came up and bit this with no bait in it. So how I kind of picked the spot that I'm fishing is there's this area that holds fish and it's a very steep break. And what I did is I drilled out a bunch of holes and I dropped down the underwater camera. It was my AquaView Micro Revolution 5.0 Pro. Um, it's a super awesome unit to kind of hole hop and just kind of do a little scouting. So I was doing a little scouting, seeing what I found. And this area was holding a little bit more rubble, a little bit more rock um, than some of the other areas. So as it's getting close to spawn here, those rocky rubbly areas tend to hold a few more fish. So once I kind of pinpointed the area that I want to start, then I drilled out my holes, got everything set up. Um, now I'm running my AquaView HD7i. It's one of the HD cameras, so it's got a very good picture on it. It's just so fun to see fish eat on this camera. Finally all set up, and now just get to enjoy it and fish. Oh, geez, there's three. Shoot, I wasn't recording there for a second. See, it kind of came up for it. There we go. <laughs> That other one's still down there. Oh, he's come, waiting for you to come back. Oh, there's another one down there too. There's three, four. Hey. Oh, geez, look at all of them. Oh, he's got your other one. I forgot that that one was, no, that's you. That's your high one. Ribbit everywhere. All these things are hard to grab. Oh. This is pandemonium. Right. There we go. Number two for the day. I haven't even introduced you yet. My buddy Mike is now here with me. So he just got in on the action, just got here and didn't take long and we had fish coming in. Oh, he choked that thing. They do seem to like to chase a little more during the day like that, or they'll chase up. They don't want to pull up too much because then you pull them away from the camera. Look at this Mike Ward special rod. Just perfect. Still oh yeah. Yeah, not too bad. Just has that trout and pout spoon demolished. Oh, that thing came in and was aggressive. So fun when they do that. This guy is. Did he bump it? There you go. Come on. Oh yeah. Yep, you bet. You can see him on the live scope there. <laughs> Sweet. I'm trying to get this guy out. He's gut hooked. And Mike just hooked up into another one. On the board. You bet. And luckily Mike's planning on keeping. So we're gonna keep this guy. That one was, you can see he's kind of bleeding. He got gut hooked pretty good. But we're gonna keep that one. Mike just sent that one back down and we're sitting good. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> See if I'll scoop it up right off bottom. No, nope, didn't want it off bottom. Oh, maybe we shouldn't be fishing together last time we did. Oh boy. Oh. Broke out in a pandemic. Yep. <laughs> Whammy. Man, that thing came in and just crushed yeah. it. Oh, it's so fun when they do that. He was beelining it. Sorry, I got my cord wrapping around you. Well, that's a decent oh, one. You bet. Oh, they're so squirmy once they get to the hole. Oh boy, look at one's going for the camera. You can see it on the live scope. He's gonna bump it. Yeah. Oh, no, it didn't bump it. He's coming down. Oh, no, he's coming for me. No. Oh. oh, come on. He's gonna get it. He's gonna get it. The one I swore I could've. Oh, look at those. I love those. Oh yeah, there's a second one. They're bumping. Oh, he's good. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Woo! I almost uh, didn't get that guy. I almost hit the ceiling on the hook set. Got off. Got off on the bottom. Another one coming up at the camera. You can see it just 
here, at least in my, oh, he's coming down. Come on. Smelling it, there he is. Yep. You bet. Not a big one. Squirmy little guy. And there he goes. That'll work. Oh yeah, he's gonna smoke it. Yep. You bet. Got off. Oh yeah, you can see him swimming down on the live scope there. See if this guy comes up and eats. Look at all of them. I'm not recording. What am I doing? Oh, I thought that guy was gonna smoke it. Oh, there he is. Yup, you bet. Number five. You bet, <laughs> little snake. Can't get him to hold still for me though. Oh jeez. He's on there. Yup, he is. Did I get everything started again? I think so. Okay, that's still recording. Mike just getting that one off. I'm getting this one on. Oh yeah, this one's a little bigger. Whoa, whoa. Got one coming up, one going down. Oh, oh my gosh. It's like a wrestling match here. Oh my gosh, I am losing. There we go. I can't remember what number this is for me. I think this might be number five for me too. That one right again on that. Whoa, trout and pout spoon. Let me put them back down your hole so we get a little better shot. Sweet. Oh, oh look at all of them. Oh, he bit for oh. it, but whiffed. He's trying to bite it, but he won't do it. You've heard they have bad eyesight, but man, that not moving jig was just too hard. <laughs> Thing was just like rubbing up against it. I'm just gonna let it sit. I like that a little better. Nosed it. Nosed it, come on. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, that's the thing, they definitely come in groups like that, either come in pairs or small groups. Little guy, there we go, there's number six for me. Got one on the bottom just sucking up the minnows. And we've got, that's number 11 total, I think. <laughs> He's just having a heyday down there. Yeah, that guy's still down there, here we go, one more. Oh, come on. You guys just dancing down there for us. Putting on quite the show. That guy's a butterball. He's getting it lined up. He's just probably feeling out down there. Oh, that thing is just chunk. Scoops that one up. Oh, he sensed it. Scoop it up. Yep. <laughs> Finally. Got him. We had to get all the other minnows that have fallen off first, and then he finally came and bit yours. Ah! Oh, he's still in there. And he's back down. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yep. You bet. They do that a lot. They'll look, and then they'll kind of have to back up. They'll kind of try to get a feel for it. Came off. Shoot. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, that was dirty. Oh, coming back. <laughs> he just got it on his head. Yep. You bet. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, good. I am recording. Golly, you got that whole hook set in there. Oh man, that was cool. You got to see him open his mouth and with the hooks just. That's a, that one's giving it to you a little more. Ooh. <laughs> that PC Fun Carbon X1000 getting a workout. Oh look, he's already back to the bottom again. Yeah, this thing's a beaut. There's a, love it. It's gonna be probably tangled to somebody else's line, but we'll, ooh, that's a stud. That's a stud. Oh, look at that guy. Just a chunk right there. Look at that guy right there. Oh, what a sweet fish. He's not even straightening up his tail. 
Oh man, just as that thing chomped, actually has my finger chomped right now. Oh, that is so cool. Wow, that is a beast. Oh, this drag is so loose. Shoot, forgot that I had my other rod. Oh, my hands are so slimy from that burb. Just, we just stepped outside quick to take a quick picture of Mike's and get this one, come back in and this one was just swimming around down there. Came up and took one swipe and miss. And then got her again. We'll send that one back down. Well, we had about a 15, 20 minute dry spell and then things sure uh, heated up there quick. That was awesome. Yep. There we go. There we go. We'll get him back down. Get back down here, hold again so we can get a good shot of it. Oh, there he is. A little one after it too. This one's a decent one. Not a giant, but oh, that was fun to watch. He just stopped, put on the brakes, and then came right back. Ooh, let's see if we can get him in the hole. Oh boy. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's another good one. I might need, you, need a hand to get this guy up. Oh, that drag is just so fun to hear. Oh, he's making me nervous. Oh, sweet. Get that head up there. There we go. Oh, even opened his mouth for you. Oh, what a tank. tank. Oh, sweet. Oh, you... <laughs> Bet. Oh, just a beaut right there. Oh, the belly on these things. Just awesome. Oh, we got another fat but short one there. Let this guy go. Oh, oh, that's so much fun. I tell you what, anybody that hates on fishing burbot, I don't know. You don't know what you're missing out on because being able to catch this many fish that fight like that after walleye is done, after pike is done, it is just such a fun thing to do this time of year. That one was caught on the big nasty tackle, just a plain jig. You know, the main thing with some of these baits is just to get some good glow down there and the paint on these big nasty spoons and these big nasty jigs are so good. They glow so well. This rod that I'm using is a 34 inch medium and this is actually the Mike Ward special. This is an original Mike Ward. So Mike does a little hobby rod building and he built this one for me and this is an awesome pout rod, especially in the house. Has enough backbone where you can really get the hooks into them, but it still has enough give as they get towards the hole, it won't get off. The other rod that I've been using is a 40 inch medium light. Again, built by Mike. I figured since I was fishing with him, then uh, it was about time to use both of his rods in the same video. So both these rods are paired with these PC Fun Carbon X reels, and I just love these reels for any of my ice applications. The drag is so smooth, they're such light reels. So there you go, that is the setup that I use for my eel pout. It's a little bit beefier setup than I use for walleyes. You know, if I was heading up to Lake Winnipeg, it may be similar to targeting some of those bigger walleyes like up there, um, but for typically what I target around the Park Rapids area, this is a little bit beefier, which is good for these eel pout because they just fight so much. They have so much muscle, and they are just pure mass. There we go. Fish on! Mm -hmm. There we go. Yep! There we go. You bet. Yep. There we go. There we go. We got a little bit of a mess here. Fish number 5,000. There we go. There we go. That's kind of what they're supposed to look like. Backsides. A little bit messed up. There we go. Another little guy. Just a little guy. Anyway. You bet. Number, another smaller one. Another thing that I've noticed is once it gets to be kind of closer to this after dark time, one of the things that's crucial is just keeping it on bottom. You know, as it seemed to be daylight, they were willing to chase up a little bit more, but it almost seems, you can still get some to chase after dark, but it seems if you can just keep bouncing it on bottom, that's when we get our best luck. Cause you can see on the camera, even before it got dark, how many of those fish were just sliding on bottom. You wouldn't see them on your electronics, you wouldn't see them on a live scope, but they're just kind of swimming, cruising right on the bottom, especially as you get towards these steep breaks. You know, you get some of that dead zone, so you don't always see the fish, um, but on the camera, you can see them just cruising on bottom. Oh. That's okay. <laughs> I was just picking up my pliers to cut this line, and it was somehow connected to one of my other trout and pout spoons, and 
Sure enough, picked it up, went right down the middle of the hole. But it's better than yesterday we were out fishing and I set the hook into one, set the phone on my lap, went straight down into the hole. I don't know how it happened, but I somehow reached down all the way up to my shoulder, grabbed the phone, handed the rod to my buddy Joey, and we ended up still catching the fish. I'll show you the picture here, where I was holding my phone, arm is soaked, and we still ended up getting the fish in. So it's a lot better than that. I would rather lose something like that than my phone. Oh, he got off. <gasps> no way. Get out of here. No <laughs> way. So I was just telling you how I lost that. Oh my gosh. I sent that spoon down the hole and sure enough, here it is. What are the chances of that? I cannot believe that just happened. That is awesome. One more look for that slimy little guy. And we'll get him right back down. Oh shoot, you wanted to keep one more. That's right, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, and there he is. What I say. Mike wanted to keep one more, and I threw that one back, and I said, well, I guess I should have kept that one for you. He said, ah, I'm sure we'll get another. And man of his word, he literally hooked into one right after he said that. So I made the switch to the bigger spoon. And that's what did it. Said, and it's made all the difference. Man, that guy really knows what he's talking about. Sure does. Sweet. Well, I think we're gonna call it a night. Mike's gotta work in the morning. I'm teaching kindergartners in the morning. So we both better get some sleep and get ready for tomorrow. When you can catch fish like that and catch them in decent numbers, have a good fight like that, it's such a fun late season thing to do. When the walleyes are done, when the pike are done, there's still some decent pan fish going on, but being able to target some of these bigger fish like this, there's just not a lot better. Thanks again for watching. Super appreciate the support. And like always, we'll see you next time. Good enough for who it's for.